Well, it seems that if Microsoft can't figure out foldables because those reviews on the Surface Duo sting, then Cupertino is now going to give it a stab? SCS, it looks like Apple's foldable could become a reality sooner rather than later. OnePlus might release a smartwatch soon, and they've apparently been cooking it for a long time, and no, it won't look like an Apple Watch. And Huawei's HTC is underway, and there are a ton of announcements that you really got to check out. I'm Jaime Rivera, and this just reminds me of that time when Steve Jobs said that they'd love to serve those markets that companies would underserve. I guess now it's foldables. This is Pocket Now Daily. The official news today begin with deals, and uh, some of these are actually compelling. Let's begin with Samsung. Right now, the Galaxy S20 Ultra is $150 off, which leaves the entry-level variant at $1248 shipped on Amazon. The latest 11-inch iPad Pro is currently $50 off, meaning you can get the Wi-Fi-only 256 gigs of storage variant for $850. However, they're having this weird thing where you can buy it, but you'll have to wait until stock is back. So just keep that in mind. And then finally, we've got the Garmin Vivo Move HR Hybrid Watch for $65 off, which leaves it at $285. Five bucks shipped. And then we've got Acer monitors, Sony headphones, and others in the links in the description. Now let's talk about Huawei's HTC, aka their Huawei Developer Conference as a, well, even if it is focused on developers, meaning software, we got a ton of products announced today, so bear with me. Let's begin with earbuds as the company launched their FreeBuds Pro and FreeLace Pro. The FreeLace Pro are neckband earbuds, which bring fast USB-C pairing and 24 hour long battery life. The FreeBuds Pro are their latest true wireless earbuds, which bring a new design, 40 decibel noise cancellation, better HD sound quality and awareness mode and more. Now moving on to watches, we've got a new Huawei Watch GT2 Pro and the Huawei Watch Fit. The GT2 Pro has two weeks of battery life, a sapphire watch face, and a beautiful double texture exterior with a ton of new features. The Huawei Watch Fit features a rectangular design, it sports 12 workout modes, a 10-day battery life, and more. Now, probably one of my favorite announcements is the return of the MateBook X. This used to be one of my favorite laptops. And the return of also the MateBook 14, which are now significantly thinner and more powerful. For example, the MateBook 14 brings a 14-inch 2K display at 3x2 aspect ratio. The specifications include a Ryzen 7 4800H as a starter and up to 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage, while the MateBook X brings a 13-inch 3K display with a 90 percent screen to body ratio. It packs an Intel 10th generation Core i5 or i7, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs on the SSD, with the MateBook 14 starting at $1,000 and the MateBook X starting at $1,900. Both will be available later this month. Now, probably one of the coolest things was their new adoption of NFC. If you remember, you had a tag on the MateBook X Pro for you to use with your Huawei smartphone, but now that NFC tag is actually built into the trackpad. It's really cool. We'll keep you posted when these products launches. Obviously, we will review them. However, yes, this was a developer conference, so let's move on to what the company did when it comes to software. As this, again, is day one. We've got more happening tonight with day two. First off, the company has just announced EMUI 11, which will be their new skin on top of Android 11. It brings a new always-on display, smart multi-window for multitasking, multi-screen collaboration to hook it to your computer. Again, you can pretty much use the NFC tag for this. New privacy features and more. I'll keep you posted as we will most likely be testing it very soon. Now let's move on to probably one of the most interesting announcements, which is Harmony OS 2.0, which the company has launched with improvements to make it fundamentally better. It'll bring distributed capabilities, meaning it'll support smartphones, tablets, and even wearables in the future. Their core is to develop applications for one platform and then deploy them across all supported platforms in whichever form factor that is. The SDK will be available later this year with smartphones coming with it next year. And probably one of the main reasons why this is a big deal is because this is not like in the Windows Phone days. No, Huawei is currently the largest smartphone maker in the world, making it the largest Android OEM as well, meaning they have the scale, they have the install base, 
they have the market to be able to actually push this market. And obviously we will be seeing their development when it comes to the app gallery and how that expands, because obviously that'll play a major role into how this will be a success. Now let's talk about OnePlus as uh, we've been waiting for the company to launch a watch for a bit, but uh, we were expecting it to look like something familiar because that's usually the way things go. And apparently that won't necessarily be the case. Recently, we've been covering the rumors that the OnePlus watch will be announced with the OnePlus 8T. And now the newest tweet from Max J hints to a change we weren't really expecting. In a typical cryptic fashion, he tweeted out a picture of the word watch with an O instead of an A hinting to a circular design. Now, the reason why we weren't expecting it is because, well, the rumors hinted to the OnePlus watch adopting a lot of the Oppo watch design, which we know pretty much looks like the Apple watch running Wear OS. Now, the reason why this is interesting is because apparently the company has been working on this watch for two years. So it's not just something half baked. I mean, if you even watch Michael Fisher's review on the Oppo watch, I mean, he praises their adoption of how they implemented Wear OS. So I'm really curious. We'll see what we get. Now let's move the spotlight over to Apple as uh, we've got two very interesting developments, one official, the other pretty much making something official. Let's begin with the fact that after three years, Google just announced last month that Google Maps was coming to the Apple Watch. Well, it's actually now available with the latest update. It's focused on step-by-step -step directions and ETAs, something that actually the Apple Watch and Apple Maps get right if not only that's the only thing they get right, but the main screen shows you your current trip, travel times, and your usual routes like home and work. Sadly, you can't directly input new directions on the watch, and the iPhone application will have to redirect you there. I mean, we have a full list of the new features in the links below. But now moving on to stuff that we've covered a month ago, we heard that Apple would announce a service bundle with the iPhone 12. Well, in the 3.4.0 Apple Music beta for Android, the guys over at 9to5 Google just found some confirmation for the bundle where it says your Apple Music subscription will be included in Apple One starting, and then they give like a sort of a percentage. You won't be charged for both subscriptions. You can manage it using your iPhone, iPad, Apple TV, or Mac. Now, obviously, we don't know exactly how much Apple is planning to charge for all this, but let's just hope it's not insane because, I mean, if you think about it, YouTube Music is actually kind of stealing at YouTube Premium. It's actually not so bad. And finally, the hottest news today have to do with Apple and foldables and a very interesting development. I mean, we saw today's Surface Duo reviews emerge and uh, not necessarily doing well. And uh, well, expect our review on the Galaxy Z Fold 2 happening over the weekend. And I'll tell you this much, the Z Fold 2 is a clear example of how a second generation product does things better. We didn't see that with the Surface Duo, but you know Cupertino, they're very famous for taking on a market that's not well served. And apparently this is their new strategy with foldables. We have some new leaks from none other than Ice Universe. And yeah, I know, don't scratch your heads, it actually has to do with Samsung. On a Weibo post, he claims that Apple has reportedly ordered a large number of foldable mobile phone displays from Samsung. We've known for years that Apple has been developing foldables like other companies. And we also know that Samsung is one of the major display suppliers as well. So apparently these displays will serve as samples for mobile devices for the duration of the year. And Apple seems to want them right now as rumors hint that shipments are beginning soon. Recently, we have also heard some rumors that these Apple foldables were being developed, but we don't have any concrete leaks or rumors on their design or their details, or if this is the fact that the future iPad Pro is going to branch out or anything. Whatever the case may be, let us know in the comments down below. Do you think that Apple should get into the foldable market? Because in my case, I feel that it would be a really good idea for the iPad. I feel that the iPad needs this level of uh, importance. I feel that that would be the perfect form factor for it. I'm just worried about the price, but then again, if you remember, tablet PCs were horribly expensive, and then iPads just cut the price in half and then just changed the market. So if Apple could pull that part off and make the price reasonable, I think it would be great, but that's just me. Leave us a comment down below. I'd love to know your opinion. Friends, again, if you want to get the news earlier, follow us on pocketnow.com and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. Also, follow us on social media as our extended coverage happens on Instagram. And follow me on my personal handles as I feel that I really dodged the bullet with that Surface Duo. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.